Hello everyone. In this video, I will talk about what is a PCF component in Power Apps Power Platform. So PCF stands for Power Apps Component Framework. I thought of creating this uh, series of videos on Power Apps Component Framework. So stay tuned with me in all of my videos where I will be showing you different scenarios. What is PCF? what is the overview of it, why it is required, what are the different benefits and we will talk about some different use cases which will be helpful in your live or client projects. So let's get started in this video with overview of PCF component. So when I say overview as the name suggests it is a framework basically to create code components that can be used across apps. So basically we are creating reusable components for Power Apps. And when I say Power Apps, these components can be created for both Canvas app and model driven apps. And they are basically used to enhance the user experience for users who are working on data on forms, views, dashboards, grids, and the Canvas app screens. So basically why, uh, why these are required, you might be thinking, that we have Power Apps controls, some standard controls or out of the box controls which are already available. Then why we need PCF components? Why we have to uh, develop the code components using maybe JavaScript or TypeScript or maybe some third party libraries, for example, React.js, why it is really required? So let me tell you that the Power Apps controls and uh, maybe the components which are available, sometimes they have some limitations. If you want to build, let's say, consistent eye-catching user experiences and look and feel. So what happens to out-of-the-box controls which are available? They, they might not fit all of your business or client requirements. So with PCF, what you can do is you can build your own code components, which are very visually appeal appealing and they allow, allow you to create more customized user interface as per your client requirements. So this is basically the requirement for PCF, which stands for Power Apps Component Framework. As I said, this complete series of videos, it will be very comprehensive, very exhaustive, and I will completely deep dive into the details of PCF. This is just the first video of the PCF components. Now let's talk about the benefits. What are the benefits it, it offers uh, on top of the standard or the out of the box controls? So basically, as I said, that these are the code components or reusable code components, which you can develop both for Canvas app and model driven apps, right? So here, what you are uh, doing is that you are controlling the source code. So it gives you a lot more control or a lot more freedom to develop user friendly components that are focused on specific business requirements instead of having a standard controls, which can be used in many requirements. With PCF, you will be developing a custom uh, code component which will adhere to a specific business requirement. Uh, second benefit is that components built with PCF are very much optimized by default for performance because they are very lightweight in nature by default. So they ensure that they do not slow down the overall application because at the end of the day, when you will develop the Power Apps component framework, you have to import it. Uh, or add it as a code component within your Power App screen. So they are very lightweight in nature. They are performant, so they will not impact your uh, performance of the overall application. That is also their benefit. Last but not the least, that uh, you are bundling all the files into a single solution file. It means that one solution file can be imported to different environments. I feel that is the biggest benefit or advantage which PCF component offers. Now let's come to what are the different types of components that can be created using PCF. So there are two types of basically PCF components that can be created. One is field type, another is data set type. So what is field type? A custom control for a field on the form. That is the field type. So when I say type, it is basically the template or the type which you will be using, which you will tell the solution to create, whether you want to work with a field type or you want to work as a data set type. So when I say field type template or field type precisely, so they mostly works on one particular column, column or one or more columns sometimes might be. So for example, if you have a text box or a numeric value, 
but instead of showing the numeric value on the form you want to showcase the user a slider kind of a functionality you can represent it uh, you can develop your own code component and you can represent that numeric value as the slider component so that is where you will be using the field component why because field type why because you are working on one single column or maybe some multiple columns that's why you will be using field type second type of pcf component that can be created is data set data set is something when you are working with some data set or data source which has number of rows and you want to display the rows of data so instead of uh, showing that boring maybe grid or a tabular format you would like to represent your data set or data source maybe a interactive graph instead of a normal grid or a table that's where you will use the pcf component of type data set now working with pcf so as i said these are code component you will be building some custom functionality using custom code so definitely there are some prerequisites for using pcf one of the first and foremost is your editor which is visual studio code this is why because i prefer it visual studio code vs code you can also use visual studio so there should not be a problem or any other uh, appealing editor you can use for uh, custom development another is node js so definitely you need node js npm packages node package manager and uh, the recommendation is always to use the lts version which is long term support version of node js microsoft power platform cli this is uh, basically required to build your solution to build your boilerplate uh, maybe the solution structure i have created one another another video a separate video on microsoft power platform cli i will keep the link of that video in the description of this particular video i request you to please go through that as well dotnet build tools i will talk about it later because when you will be working with visual studio 2017 19 or 2022 visual studio there you will definitely have by default the dotnet build tools available the last but not least again the prerequisite for pcf is to enable the power apps component framework feature so this is basically required when you go to the power platform admin center in power platform environment you go to power platform environment there is settings features and there you will find one feature which is called power apps component uh, framework feature by default it is turned off you have to turn it on you have to toggle it and why it is required because you want to add your code component to the app if if you want to add the code component to an app you need to enable this power apps component feature in each of the environment within your power platform so basically the power apps uh, component feature why we are doing it we are doing it for canvas app because for model driven apps it is by default enabled so till here in this video i have talked about what is pcf what is the overview of pcf what are the different type of pcf you can create different templates i mean the field type or the data set type and what are its prerequisites now we are going to see what is the composition of a pcf component since as i said this is the part 1 of the video this is just an overview of pcf component the next videos i will be showcasing the uh, live demos that how you create the solution how you work with the component what are the different things which we are talking about in this video for example the manifest file the component implementation the different life cycle methods which an object implements so all these things we are talking about here in this video but in detail and live demos in visual studio code i will be showcasing in the next series of this videos in the video 2 3 4 and so on so first and foremost the code component consists of three elements first is the manifest file so manifest file is basically the control manifest.input.xml this is a metadata file which defines a component it defines about the name the description the version of the component all these things are defined in the manifest file the component implementation so as i said the code components we are working on the custom development custom code development so code components are implemented using typescript so each code component must include an object that is described in the co code component interface so here we use the power platform cli to auto generate a file which is called index.ts when i say ts it is the typescript file that includes some implementation for these methods now when i say methods these are basically the life cycle methods which are available in index.ts file and these methods are init update view get outputs and destroy definitely we will be talking about these methods in the upcoming slides in this video and at the same time we will be seeing this all these methods and the life cycle in the subsequent videos of this series 
the third very important element which is there in uh, a pcf component is the resources there is a node called resources in the manifest file which refers to the resources that the component requires maybe it could be a resource file or it could be a css file so different types of files can be refer uh, referred within the resource node in the manifest file now the same thing which we talked about in the previous slide the composition of a pcf component as i said manifest file component implementation and the resource file so you can see the manifest file should consist of name description version what are the resource files available all these things are the part of the manifest file and when i say component implementation so basically you are writing the user interface the business logic or the functionality using the typescript javascript or maybe react js now when i say resource files so resource files as i said you can refer the css external css files you can add a custom css file in your project or solution structure which we will see in the, again the subsequent videos everything what we are talking about we will see in the subsequent videos and these resource files it could be static resources like libraries css and images now coming to the last part of this video pcf component life cycle very very important slide why because it showcases the different methods how the framework calls the component and what are the different methods which get called at the different stages so you can see here the first of all when the framework calls a component init method first of all the framework component init method is called and if the component is in interactive you can also need to notify the host so using using here you can see you are notifying the host that the component output has changed and how you are notifying it by calling the notify output change method so in my previous slide i showed you that there are some methods which is init update view get outputs and destroy here there are some other methods which you can call definitely and one of them is notify output change method so the first and foremost is that the init function is called and it notifies the host that the component output has changed using the notify output change method now what happens the framework runtime it calls it this basically calls the get output methods to get the value of all bound properties of your component then the runtime this basically runtime it notifies the host and this host validates the output now if the validate if if it validating during the validating if the output is valid so this is called yes if the if the output is valid then it calls the update view and updated update view method and updated value is presented on the framework component in case if it is if it is not valid for whatever may be the reason uh then again update view is called uh, using cc this no accept output by the host is no again update view is called method is called however it passes the old value and error to your component in either of the scenario your component can update the user interface and maybe if it is invalid the output is invalid it can also present the error message on the user interface wherever it is applicable so that's all in this video i have given you the complete overview of a pcf component uh, just a quick summary pcf stands for power apps component framework we talked about the different benefits it offers then we talked about the compon uh, composition of a pcf component which are the three major elements the three major elements of any pcf component is the manifest file manifest file and then the component Uh, functionality implementation and the third one is the resources part what are the two types of uh, pcf component you can create you can create either a field type or a data set type and the last part we talked about the life cycle methods that how the component the your uh, framework component renders the output on the user interface so that's all in this video i highly recommend to go through all my videos of this series in the upcoming weeks i will be publishing many many videos on pcf component how to develop it what are the different scenarios and maybe some very useful use cases till then thanks a lot and bye